So this year I got a chance to review over 20 bicycles for the YouTube channel, a lot of them in the gravel and adventure category, and almost every single one of them got this one thing wrong, and that is the gearing. In this video I'm going to rant a little bit about this this huge pet peeve I have with bike brands, bike companies that overgear their so-called adventure bikes. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers and if you're new to the channel, if you love gravel riding, bike culture, and are tired of overgeared bicycles, hit that subscribe button and notification bell and welcome to the supple life. So in almost every single bike I've reviewed this year, if you go through the videos, one of my negatives for every single bike is that they're overgeared. The de facto gearing for every gravel bike, adventure bike these days is a compact road double. So that means a 50 tooth big chain ring and a 34 tooth small chain ring, which in the grand scheme of things is not very small at all. And before I go any further, these are my opinions and it's based on where I ride, how I ride and my ability. If you live in super flat terrain or if you're some kind of mega athlete and you're like, hey, I can spin the 52 11 all day, well, that's great for you, but that's not everybody. Why do all these bikes end up with a 5034 in the first place? The 5034 is what's known as the compact road double, which is kind of like the mini baby brother to the regular road double, which is also absurdly geared with chain rings as big as 53 teeth. Chain rings as big are only necessary when you're doing elite level road racing. And even at that, it's used like 1% of the time. For those last few minutes, big sprint, the bikes are geared for that last 10% of the race. And because of that reason, that's trickled down to affect about 98% of the bikes on the market. And that is absolutely frustrating. To give you perspective, to spin out that gear, you're going in excess of 35 miles miles per hour. So I don't know how often you're going 35 miles per hour, but I rarely see that even on the downhill sometimes. And yet we are stuck in this tradition of massive gears when it makes no sense for most people and in particular gravel road riding. If you think about the conditions of a road bike, it's mostly on tarmac, on paved roads. And here in the United States, most paved roads have a certain grade limit. They're not gonna be extended climbs and double digits in rough terrain. When you compare that to a gravel road, a forest service road, a logging road, those have no <laughs> rules in terms of gradients. You can hit double digit gradients for miles, going over baby heads. And what we get essentially is gearing that's optimized for one type of terrain and they just slap it on by defunct on this new type of riding. And that is so aggravating. Whenever I see a compact road double on a so-called gravel or adventure bike, I think a couple things. One, the bike brand is being really lazy. Two, they don't actually care. They just see this as an extension of the road market. They don't respect this genre or this type of riding. Three, they think the consumer is dumb. Four, they're being cheap, which leads back to number one, which they don't really care. It is so aggravating when I see a so-called touring bike with a compact road double. I just wanna punch it in the face. All right, so I know what you're thinking. You're all worked up, you're really upset. What are the alternatives? Thankfully, there are some alternatives and actually some of them are pretty affordable. I think a more appropriate gearing for gravel bikes, for touring bikes, is something like the wide range double, uh, which coincidentally is nothing new. It's what used to be on the old French manure bikes, 46, 30, or even the 46, 28, 26, whatever. But we just have to get out of the 50s. I'm gonna put a link to Sheldon Brown's bike calculator down below so you can nerd out on gear inches. But basically, if you have a 46 tooth chain ring and you're spinning at a cadence of 90 uh, RPMs, you're still gonna hit 30 miles per hour. Another chain ring combination that we actually use for our Vias is a 4028, which is a traditionally a mountain bike double but makes a great adventure double. And spinning out a 40 at 90 cadence, you're still gonna be traveling in the mid to upper 20 mile per hour zone. But you gain all that functionality in the low end to go up steep gravel climbs, especially with gear. So in my opinion, a 4630, a 4228, uh, even a 4028, 4026, is a great option for a adventure bike or a gravel bike. Unless you're like Ted King and you're racing Dirty Kanza and you're gonna be there for the sprint, there are much better gearing options than the typical compact road double. So who makes them? I'm gonna give you guys a list of what I know in all sorts of different price ranges. So you can decide for yourself. Some of them uh, we've tried, many of them we have not, but I hope to try next year. So for a good American made option, there is White Industries. They have, they've got this really innovative spider that allows you to put on any combination of rings that you want, but not cheap. 
definitely not cheap. Another great option are the Rene Earth Cranks from our friends at Compass Bicycles. who are probably responsible for this resurgence in 650B, but I, I think are also going to be pushing for more reasonable crank sets. Again, also not cheap. A little bit more affordable option, but no less shiny is the Grand Crew Cranks from uh, Velo Orange. I'm actually running those on the polyvalent and I love them. They shift great with uh, modern brifters. Great gearing for on the road and gravel climbs. Those run about $200, so a little bit more accessible. But wait, there's also the Sagino XD2 that you can get from Rivendell. A very reasonable gearing at 4026. So your top end at a 90 uh, cadence is gonna be in the mid 20s, but you've got an amazing low end. So when you're going up steep hills with all your camping gear, it's got you covered. And that costs about 158. So there are lots of reasonable options. Another great option, which is becoming super affordable, are mountain bike doubles. Do you remember those? Most mountain bikes are shipping with a one by, so you can generally get these for pretty cheap. On our Salsa Vias, we are running a uh, SRAM, I think they're X7, X9 cranks with a 4028, or you can get them in a 4228. And those run anywhere from like 60 bucks to 130 bucks. Don't overlook the mountain bike double. They're, they're a great option with a lot more appropriate gearing. Two other options, which I've not tried personally, but have heard a lot about. There's the Easton EC90. Again, that give you a 4630 option. And another crank set is the FSA Omega, another 4630 option. And they have a couple of iterations of that from, from those that are relatively inexpensive to carbon fiber ones. So you can customize all to your heart's content. So as you can see, there is actually a fair amount of options uh, for better and more appropriate gearing on gravel bikes. So why bike brands just slap on a compact road double as some kind of perfunctory action. I don't know. It's probably because they don't really care or they think that we all aspire to race, which we don't. Uh, a big reason a lot of people are riding gravel is because it's so different from the road scene that's so uber competitive. Although granted that is changing now, but still, if you work at a bike brand and you're watching this video or you follow the channel and you have the ability to somehow influence component choices on your next brand's gravel bike, please, Please look at other options other than the compact road double. Show us consumers that one, that you actually understand this kind of riding, two, you're not a cheap bastard, and three, you care. All right, so that's it for this ranty video. I apologize, but it just, it just annoys me so much. What do you guys think? Are you guys fans of the subcompact? I see it as a big trend. You know, we're getting wider tires. We're gonna get more reasonable gearing soon. Eventually in like five years, we're all gonna be essentially riding uh, French style rain and river bikes, but they're just gonna be called gravel bikes. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. And if you enjoy this content, if you're tired of road racing dominating, uh, you know, the bike stuff that we get, support the channel so I can make more content like this. And as always, keep the supple side down.